I hope everybody can hear me now. We've had a few technical difficulties, uh, but I think we've sorted it out. And I want to thank Frank and also my good friend Miriam uh, for convening um, this conference. And uh, I've been asked to say a few words about the Middle East um, uh, peace agreements that were recent that were recently signed, uh, both with UAE and with Bahrain. I think the best place to start is to go back to the Riyadh summit, and that was President Trump's first trip overseas as president. And when he was in Riyadh, he spoke to the leaders of 55 Arab Muslim nations, and he talked about forming new partnerships for peace. He focused on shared interests and shared challenges. And so he talked a lot about uh, countering extremism, the Islamist extremism, both Sunni and Shia, that has done so much uh, to cause suffering and bloodshed and rob people of bright futures in the region. He also talked about countering Iran and the threat that Iran presents to Middle East peace he talked about defeating ISIS, another variant of extremism. Uh, and they had a caliphate that, that was the size of Ohio. Uh, yet a terrorist army in the heart of the Middle East in Iraq and Syria. So when, when the president was in Riyadh, this was his vision. He wanted to work on peace between Arabs and Israelis. He wanted to defeat ISIS. He wanted to counter Iran and he wanted to Focus on shared interests, shared opportunities. And you can draw a direct line from that speech in Riyadh to the peace agreements that were signed uh, by UAE, Israel, and Bahrain. Shortly after Riyadh, um, President Trump asked his son-in-law, uh, Jared Kushner, to start working on a vision for peace between Israel and Palestine. Now, the international community uh, is full of a lot of experts on the Middle East. I think one of the things that I've noticed is that they do more talking than listening. Jared came into the region with a fresh set of eyes, and he listened, uh, and he listened all over. We made many trips to the region, and if you listen to what the region is saying, they are focusing on dealing with extremism, countering threats like Iran, and focusing on jobs and opportunity for their own people. They want to invest in their people. They want to invest in the future. And that was a message that we heard loud and clear. And so over the next couple of years, uh, many trips to the region, we, we, we had a Warsaw summit where we gathered 65 nations from around the world, from every region of the world, met in Warsaw, Poland, to discuss promoting peace in the Middle East. And I remember we had a dinner at the president's palace the night before uh, the summit. And in the same room, you had the prime minister of Israel and many Arab Gulf nations. And what you heard listening to them talk, and they, they all made remarks during that dinner, was the urgent need to build new partnerships and after the Warsaw uh, Ministerial, that stimulated a lot of conversations, uh, including between Israel, UAE, Bahrain, other countries, about what we could do to start uh, working together. In Bahrain, we also convened a number of countries, and that's when we released our economic vision of the peace plan, economic opportunity for the Palestinian people. And then in January of this year, we were able to release our political and economic vision at the same at, at the same event. And so again, in the same room, you had the Prime Minister of Israel. You also had the ambassador uh, ambassadors from UAE and Bahrain. And when our peace plan was released, it was viewed by many Arab governments and many Arab uh, Muslim people as credible. That should be the basis for talks between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Ultimately, the Palestinian leadership decided not to, the, not to come to the table. Uh, we think the Palestinian people would have preferred to have their own leaders uh, begin talks. And it was really out of the material of the 
uh, vision for peace, that proved to be the raw material uh, where we were able to draw upon to get the agreements with UAE and Bahrain. I think during that period of essentially three years of working together on, on a peace plan, it was a period where we were, we were able to build trust and to build confidence and to build respect. And we certainly saw the opportunity very early coming into office. We very easily, very early saw that there was an opportunity to bring some Arab states and Israel together, not only on the basis of shared opportunities, but on the basis of countering uh, an Iranian threat, which had metastasized under the prior administration and is owing in large part to the Iran nuclear deal, uh, which gave Iran a lot of money and it gave them a free hand in the region. And as, as you talk with a lot of our friends uh, and partners in the region, there was a real desire to create new partnerships and to confront shared threats. And that's, that I think is the, the insight that we certainly understood very early on. And so certainly we very much like our, our vision for peace. We're very hopeful about it. We know that it enjoys a lot of support uh, in the region. But other nations are not going to let themselves be held back by a leadership in Palestine that refuses to come to the table. And unfortunately, they're living up to their stereotype of never missing an opportunity to miss an opportunity. I think the Palestinian people would very much like to get moving. And look, uh, I, so many of, of the people in the Palestinian territories are under 35. You look at Iran, two thirds of the Iranian people were born after the revolution. And the young people in the region are tired of the old conflicts. They're tired of the sectarian violence. They're tired of the extremism. And what they're focused on are very basic things. They're focused on jobs. They're focused on uh, income, providing for their family, living in peace. And they want to turn the corner on so many of these old conflicts. And so I'm very hopeful that historians will look at these two peace agreements as the beginning of the end of the Arab-Israeli conflict. It's gone on for far too long. And if you look at the region, if you look at where the energy is, especially among the young people, they very much want a different future. They don't want to fight um, the ghosts of the past. And so we are hopeful that more nations uh, will see the same opportunity that UAE and Bahrain have identified. There's already so much progress and work that's being done uh, in UAE, Israel, and Bahrain. We want that work to continue. We want other nations to enjoy the same benefits, uh, the same fruits of peace. Uh, and so I, I very much hope uh, that the participants in this conference will build on the success that we've had over the last um, few years, uh, focusing on shared interests and values, standing up to the threats that do the most to destabilize the region, and doing what we can um, to promote harmony in the region. Uh, so that's our hope. I'm hopeful that, that, that uh, at some point, uh, the Palestinian leadership will come to the table. Um, and I, I know that's very much what the Palestinian people would like to see. It'd be very positive for the region. And so we're going to um, keep at our work, uh, building on the success we've had, and very much encourage others to join us. Thank you.